All right, good evening folks, it's Enforcer Matt and welcome back to another Short War video and today we have very big news off the coast of Florida that there's currently a Russian fleet of vessels making their way down the coast of Florida down to Cuba for some planned military exercises and the US military has brought out all of their surveillance aircraft and also ships to surveil that convoy while it makes its way down to that planned area. We're also getting news as well that a Russian SU-34 has crashed last night and all the crew has been lost and we're also also getting word that a Russian vessel is currently on fire and it also carries some pretty big munitions. And finally, we are getting some news from the Asian region that North Korea sent some soldiers into South Korea yesterday and it caused some warning shots to get fired, which is obviously a pretty big escalation and we have all the news on that as well. But with that, let's move into our first article of the day, which goes to the Intel Frog. And in this post right here, you can see the US Coast Guard Cutter Stone may be shadowing the Russian flotilla, which may be off the east coast of Florida, a beam of of Cape Canaveral. And also, by the way, this post was made at about 2 o'clock yesterday, so this is old news at this point. But just to give you some history of the tracking of that flotilla, this U.S. Coast Guard cutter had made their way through the Atlantic. You can see there's a bit of a zigzag pattern right here. Then they made their way up toward the top of the coast, sort of like in the trajectory of New York. And then they took a left turn, sort of tracking the coast of the United States right here on the East Coast. And then they took a sharp left turn toward the coast of Florida. And presumably, that Coast Guard cutter is tracking the Russian flotilla, which is making their way down toward Cuba for some planned military exercises. So that is what we have from yesterday. But moving on to our next post here, we now have one from War Intel. And then we got word that the Russian Navy flotilla appeared to be right off the coast of Florida. And then we saw a U.S. Navy P-8 Poseidon, maritime patrol and reconnaissance aircraft, was watching over them overhead. And right here in this graphic, you can see there is the P-8 Poseidon on the tracker right here. It is going in a large loop pattern around this general vicinity in the water right off the coast. Uh, and this is allegedly where the Russian flotilla was as of 3 o'clock yesterday, uh, which is where we saw that tracking information go to from the U.S. Coast Guard cutter. And this is where the P-8 Poseidon was as well. So the Russians were right off the coast of Florida, and they made their way down a little bit further as of today, which we'll see in our next post coming up here, which is also from the Intel Frog. And in this post, we can see the U.S. Air Force KC-135 strategy tanker was in an unusual spot orbiting just southwest of where the Russian flotilla and escorts are pinging on the AIS which is the airplane tracking system and right down here on this map you can actually see here is the tracking of the actual Russian vessels themselves and right there in the red you'll see there's the Coast Guard Cutter Stone which is tracking that convoy and there's also some other US government vessels as well keeping an eye on those warships and they're right here off the Key Largo coast right here right down below so they're not too far away at all but right up here we can actually see the aircraft tracking information as well and once again this shows the KC-135 Stratotanker which apparently took off from St. Petersburg according to this map it's also down here circling around the same vicinity of those vessels so we're clearly keeping a very close eye on those vessels they're of course in international waters they're not within U.S. national territory so they are safe for now out there in the water but they're getting pretty close to making their way toward Cuba which is right down here at the bottom so they appear to be making their way down there and they should arrive probably by the end of the day today or early in the morning but even better than that in our next post here which is from the intel frog as well we actually got a photo of part of the russian flotilla and escort as seen from a celebrity reflection cruise ship and this is quite crazy to see we have an actual photo here allegedly from a cruise ship showing the russian warships out here in the distance uh, which is quite crazy to see this was right off the coast of florida very interesting to see and also apparently spooking the people on a cruise ship uh, seeing these vessels out in the ocean but with that we're jumping into our next post here and this one is going to go to the Kiev post and right here we can see a Russian SU-34 crashed in North Ossetia during a training flight and the crew is now entirely dead says the Russian Ministry of Defense and it's also claimed that the aircraft crashed due to a technical malfunction if you can believe that of course that is reported by the Russian MOD so they could be lying but you never know um, but not only did yesterday Russia lose a SU-57 stealth fighter if you can call it stealth they lost one of their most important air 
aircraft. Now they're losing the SG-34 as well in a quote-unquote training accident. So another big loss for the Russians and another aircraft down the drain. But anyways, moving on to our next post here, this one is going to go to Nexta. And in this one, we can see that the Navy of the AFU reports that last night, the Russian large anti-submarine ship, the Admiral Levchenko, is on fire in the Barents Sea, and the ship could be carrying several hundred crew. And this was reported by the Speaker of the Navy of the AFU, Dmitry Pletenchuk, and he said that the cause of the fire was a malfunction of one of the engines. So, once again, Russia's lovely fleet here, which is just so modern and well-maintained, is catching on fire because of engine problems. Quite bad indeed, and another embarrassment for the Russians. But moving on to our next post here, we now have one from Blaskovka. And they tell us in this post right here that a sugar factory is on fire near Belgorod due to a drone strike, says local channels. And the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation reports that one drone was shot down. And we have the video right here of the whole incident. So let's take a look and see what happened. So right here you can see the sugar factory is on fire and it is putting black smoke up in the air pretty much everywhere. And what an odd place to have a sugar factory by the way. So it looks like an industrial park, um, but very interesting. It's on fire here in Belgorod due to a Ukrainian drone strike. So once again, Belgorod is getting hammered very hard and they're having a hard time defending their city. But moving on to our next post here, this one is going to go to Max24 on Twitter. And not only is Belgorod on fire, but also in the Slovolsk region in Russia, in the city of Aramil, a production workshop is on fire and the area of the fire is about 900 square meters so also another very large fire and as you can see right here in the photo that place is up in a blaze I'm not really sure what the production facility is making at this location, but it is indeed almost completely destroyed by this fire, and it looks like the Russian uh, fire department is not even out here to put it out. So, once again, another big fire. But with that, we're jumping into our next article here, and this one also goes to Nexta, and we're learning that Ukraine will receive the third Patriot system from Germany, and that this was announced by the country's Chancellor, Olaf Scholz, at a conference on the reconstruction of Ukraine in Berlin. And not only is Ukraine getting that third Patriot from Germany, they're also getting the Iris T Gepard systems, missiles, and ammunition as well. And all of this will go to Ukraine in the following months and weeks, says Schultz. So, once again, a very big deal to get another Patriot system going to Ukraine because that'll help protect the skies above the major cities there in Ukraine. And that is a big win. But with that, we're jumping into our next post here, and this one is going to go to the Kiev Independent. And we're also getting very positive news as well, that the U.S. is now lifting the weapons ban on Ukraine's Azov Brigade. And it says the United States will allow Ukraine's Azov Brigade to use weapons provided by the U.S. to fight Russia's full-scale invasion, says the State Department, which they announced that yesterday, and they reversed a long-standing policy. So me personally, I'm glad to see they reversed that because the Azov Brigade is key to Ukraine's defense. But with that, we're jumping into our next post here, and we're going to switch gears just a little bit. We're going to get off our Ukraine-Russia news for just a moment and move on to some very big news happening between North and South Korea. And we can see right here from Yonhap News Agency that the South Korean military says that it had to fire warning shots after some North Korean soldiers briefly crossed the border on Sunday. And they apparently crossed right over the border into South Korean territory. And obviously, if they're having to fire warning shots, that's not good. That means they were over there for probably a good minute uh, or they crossed pretty deep into the border. Um, but they did have to fire those shots and tell them to get back across the border. And in our next post here from Global Military Info, we get some more details on the incursion. And we can see here that according to South Korea's JCS, the South Korean soldiers fired warning shots after an entire group of North Korean soldiers crossed the demarcation line. But the key thing here is the North Korean soldiers quickly retreated back to their side of the border. So we're not exactly sure why they crossed the border, if it was maybe just testing the defenses or what. Uh, we're not really told why this happened, but it could be, like I said, that the North Koreans are probing the border to see if there are any defenses in certain parts of it uh, for reference in the future and also for their own intel. But I personally don't suspect we'll be getting any news from Kim Jong-un in the future about why this occurred because, of course, they're probably going to keep this under the radar for the most part. But with that, we're jumping into our last post of the day, and this one goes to OSINT Defender on Twitter. And speaking of the Asian region, not only do we have that news about North and South Korea, but we also have some news between China and Taiwan as well. And we're learning that the commander of the U.S. Indo-Pacific uh, Command, which is Admiral Samuel Paparo, has stated that the United States and allies in the region have established a strategy called Hellscape that would be used in the case of a Chinese invasion of Taiwan and would see the deployment of thousands of unmanned submarines and service ships, as well as one-way attack drones, alongside several quote-unquote classified capabilities that would strike the Chinese invasion fleet as soon as it began to head across 
across the 100 mile strait towards Taiwan and hopefully giving the U.S., Taiwanese, and allied militaries the time it needs to mount a total defense of the island. So to me personally, I'm very glad to hear that we have a plan in place to protect Taiwan, but the big question here is, would the United States actually put this plan into motion if China decided to invade the island? That is the big question at the moment. Of course, there are people speculating it could go either way. It could be that the United States sort of steps back and sort of takes a second look at the situation if China were to invade, or it could be that we immediately go in and protect them right off the bat. Right now, we simply do not know, but there is a plan in place if it wants to be exercised uh, right here to protect that island. So we'll just have to wait and see. And with that, that is actually our last piece of news for the day. And I hope you found today's video informative. And if you have found it informative, please press the like button and also subscribe to the channel as well. Because that greatly helps us get the news out there. And also, if you want to support our operation financially, you can do so on our Patreon page. And the link is in the description below for that, where you can go over to Patreon, sign up to become a member, and that, that helps us in a very big way because, of course, the channel is almost entirely crowdfunded by the viewers, and it is, it is the viewers yourselves that make this all possible. But once again, thank you all for watching. We'll see you all tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern on our nightly war news stream, and bye-bye for now.